everyone. Welcome back to the Broncos Podcast Network in YouTube for the latest edition of Broncos Now. I'm your host, Sydney Jones, and it was a, a very rainy day here at the UC Health Training Center. So practice was moved to inside the Pat Bolin Fieldhouse. Head coach Nathaniel Hackett met with the media following practice today and said there was no concern moving practice inside that the guys need to be able to adjust. I'm not a big fan of the rain. Never really liked it. Sometimes it takes away from the things that you can accomplish on the field. So I want to be sure we got great work today and the guys did an excellent job. The Broncos had to trim down their roster to 85 players today. Safety Jamar Johnson, running back Max Borgie, wide receiver Caden Davis, tight end Rodney Williams, and wide receiver Travis Fulgham were all waived this afternoon. As a first-time head coach, Coach Hackett detailed how he handles making these cuts and what the process is like between him and general manager George Payton. First and foremost, it sucks. I mean, these guys have been busting their, uh, their behinds um, for, you know, all the way back. You go to phase one and you know they're part of our group they're part of our family and we appreciate everything that those guys have done and um, there is a human element but yes I will talk with everybody um, it's one of those things that guys know I you know I, I embrace even those those rough times and uh, you know I just want to be sure I always thank them for everything that they've done our communication is fantastic I think that uh, you know it's a, it's a hard time regardless I mean anytime you make any cut you're always making hard decisions because the guys have really done a great job everybody and I think I'm very lucky to have a guy like George that you can communicate with, you can talk with. Uh, if you have a disagreement, you, you, you can work it out and try to figure it out what's best for the team in the long run. Talk about the football aspect, the person is another thing. You know, all those different things, we want to be sure that we're having the right people here that are doing their job and we're on the same page from that standpoint. In other news, defensive tackle DJ Jones and wide receiver Jerry Judy also met the media today. DJ Jones talked about the defensive line's identity and why they call themselves the dark side. I feel like it'll come out in our play, man. Um, it's something that uh, Coach Dixon created um, for our defensive unit, mainly the D-line. But it's uh, something we break down. It's something we live by now. So um, we, you got to go to a dark place when you step on that field. So start inside forever. DJ also went on to explain what that dark place is for him. Some people like to go on, onto the field, happy-go-lucky, like – Cool, but we're in the trenches. It's not pretty down there. Um, you don't know what you're going to get. You might get 40 double teams in a game. You got to go somewhere where you know you're going to defeat those double teams. Your mind has to be somewhere where you've never been all week, and you got to prepare yourself for a battle. So every, every Sunday, Monday, Thursday, whenever they want to put the ball down, you got to go to a dark place. I mean, my dark place is really just locking in. I don't say much. If, if they uh, put a mic on me, you're not going to get nothing. Um, my dark place is just locking in, man, and, and playing physical as I could possibly play. Jerry Judy did not play in the Broncos' first preseason game this past Saturday, but he said it was great to see some of the other young receivers out there. Yeah, it was very exciting to see um, the receiver put in the work during the week and go out there and execute the plays and made and made a whole bunch of plays. It was fun, got me excited, ready to go out there and play with them, but um, it was very exciting. When it comes to the preseason and playing starters, Coach Hackett's philosophy is that he'd rather be safe than sorry. So he believes a practice like today can be just as effective as a preseason game. You know, how we try to protect the guys and get them ready so that they can come out there and play at the highest level is what we're aiming for. So those practices, we want them to be more efficient, better, faster, um, just as game-like as possible. Um, and I think that that's what we're trying to create. And the more that they do that, the better. Now, if it gets bad or anything like that, then, yeah, we might have to throw them in the games, you know, you guys. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, but, but in the situation, I think they've all stepped up to that challenge, and I think they've done a, done a great job. Now joining me here in the Broncos podcast studio is Broncos lead writer Eric Dalala. Eric, appreciate you joining me on the show again today. Yeah, of course. Eric, you know me pretty well at this point. You know I hate days like today, roster cut days. I talked about it earlier in the show, but safety Jamar Johnson, running back Max Borgie, wide receiver Caden Davis, tight end Rodney Williams, and wide receiver Travis, Travis Fulgham, they were all waived this afternoon. Just want to hear your thoughts, your immediate reaction to that. Yeah, I mean, it's a tough day, obviously. I think what Nathaniel Hackett said stands out that this day sucks, as he put it. It's kind of the worst part of this business. You get into coaching to work with these guys and they all work so hard. And unfortunately, just everyone can't make the team. And this is that first round of it. It's going to continue over the next few weeks. Mm -hmm. um, 
not sure there were too many surprises for most of the cuts that were made. A little bit surprised with the Jamar Johnson, just because he was a fifth round pick a year ago. You wondered if maybe they were going to give him a little bit more time to figure things out, but they're just so stacked at safety right now behind Justin Simmons and Kareem Jackson. Yeah. You've got PJ Locke, Caden Stearns, Delarian Turner Yell, J.R. Reed. Um, there's mm-hmm. a lot of guys there, and so it probably was just a numbers game for him. And then I was a little surprised with Travis Fulgham just because a couple of years ago he was the Eagles' leading receiver. Um, I think he had over 50 catches last year, so a guy that was proven, a guy that has done it in this league before, and obviously without Tim Patrick and a lot of young receivers, I think you're kind of looking for proven guys. But for whatever reason, you know, he didn't make a ton of plays on Saturday night against the Cowboys, and there weren't those flash moments during training camp either. And so I wonder... With guys like Jamar and Travis, you know, they're good enough that they could have made it, I think, to the 85 person, the 80 person cuts. Yeah. I wonder if the team is saying, hey, you know, it's not in our plans for the 53 man roster to have you here. We're going to let you go now and you can look for a situation, you know, give teams more time to sign you potentially because when everyone gets cut between the 80 and 53 man cut, that's a lot of players out there all at once. Frenzy. Exactly. And so for, you know, sometimes teams, when they're trying to do guys a favor, right. they'll say, we're actually going to let you go a little bit earlier, give you time to find a new spot. I think a guy like Travis Fulgham will find a place to play. I know we've talked about on the show before how crowded that wide receiver room is. So two fewer guys in there now. There's a lot of talent still in that room. So kind of where do you think that room stands now, Eric? Yeah, it's a good question. Um, obviously, you've got Cortland. You've got Jerry Judy. You've got KJ Hamler at the top, so that's three. You figure Montreal Washington is going to make the team as a returner, and we've seen him do good things as a receiver as well, so that's four. Most teams only keep five or six guys. Something to watch is if KJ Hamler, who hasn't practiced the last couple weeks, if he has to go on IR to start the season, he has to be on the 53 going into that initial day, and then they can move him to Mm -hmm. to IR, so it's possible that one of these receivers could maybe not make the roster initially, then be signed back. Um, But yeah, if you're looking at five or six guys, that means there's one or two spots left. I would say probably Kendall Hinton is the favorite at this moment. And Brandon Johnson, he's a bigger bodied guy, an undrafted receiver, probably has the best chance. You know, Denver has a long history of undrafted players making the team. He probably has the best chance right now out of those guys. Looked good on Saturday. Yeah, of course, had a great game. Um, So I look at those two guys as possibilities. And, of course, Seth Williams, a a sixth-round pick last year, he Mm -hmm. had that nice touchdown catch against the Cowboys. And Jalen Virgil, of course, went off in the second half, had a team-high 83 yards, I believe. So those are kind of the four guys you look at pushing for one or two spots. And, again, the KJ situation just makes it a little bit more interesting because if you have to carry him and you need one of those receivers, it could really be a situation where – you wave multiple guys and then just see who's available who's the next day, who's been claimed and who's still around. So it makes sense. It'll be interesting to see, but you know, no clear separation yet. We're going to have to see this week against Buffalo next week against Minnesota, who really stands out. And Eric, I know during press conferences today, you asked Jerry Judy, if he feels, I don't want to say pressure, but if he feels like he needs to step up in Tim Patrick's place or in Tim's, you know, absence, what did he say about that? Yeah, he's just trying to focus on his own role. I don't think you can put too much pressure on yourself, which is what you kind of expect someone like Jerry to say. You know, Mm -hmm. he's not going to say, oh, I've got to do this all myself. I think they've got to trust the other guys in their room. He's got to trust Cortland. Um, I do think they'll be able to replace his production, and it is going to come in part from Jerry and Cortland stepping up. But, um, you know, I wasn't surprised that he didn't kind of put that all on his shoulders. Um, You don't want to take on, I guess, that pressure at this moment. But I I do think in the long run, Jerry's going to have to shoulder some of that load. Well, in terms of practice today, we saw Graham Glasgow. He got some time at center. Both Lloyd Cushenberry and Luke Wattenberg did not practice today. And I know Coach Hackett said that he was pretty impressed with Graham Glasgow's performance on a Saturday during that preseason game. So, Eric, what do you think about him as he's, you know, progressing or as he's, as he's progressed over the past couple of weeks and from, you know, his injury? Yeah, I mean, Graham's had kind of a weird couple of he years has. here. Um, obviously, I think he had the, the bout with COVID a few years ago. Mm-hmm. He had uh, the heart arrhythmia or that, that sort of situation. Yeah. I think that was, um, that was against scary. the Giants last year. Yeah, and obviously mm-hmm. missed a couple of weeks from that. Comes back, gets hurt against Dallas, um, is carted off the field, fractures his ankle, um, and he's had to work back from that. And so he's gone from a guy that in Detroit, obviously, was a, a longtime starter, came here as kind of a prized free agent, um, and is now a guy that's just battling for a roster spot, battling for time along that offensive line. He's got versatility, which makes him really valuable. He can play left guard, right guard, center. Um, 
and he has experience, which is obviously helpful. You know, they have to see how does he fit in the zone blocking scheme. But Graham's a guy that, you know, both because of his experience and his contract, I'd expect him to end up on this roster. I'd expect mm-hmm. him to make the team. Um, but, you know, it, there's a difference between, of course, making a roster and being a starter. And I think he has a chance now to, to show, hey, here's what I can do, because it has surprised me a little bit that, as we've gone through training camp, you know, Quinn Miners and Natani Muti rotated a little bit. Mm-hmm. Dalton Reisner and Natani Muti rotated a little bit. You haven't seen until today because of injury, Graham Glasgow working in that way. Yeah. And so he's a guy I think that's going to really have to prove himself over these final two preseason games. Nathaniel Hackett said he saw Graham's best football uh, on Saturday against the Cowboys when he played. He played a little bit of guard, a little bit of center. Again, showed that versatility, but... Uh, Graham is a valuable piece, and as you know, Cindy, on the offensive line, you're going to have these injuries. There's you a very those guys. exactly. There's a very real chance at some point he's going to have to step in and start. Definitely. Well, another thing that was talked about um, during press conferences today was head coach Nathaniel Hackett's dislike for these <laughs> preseason games. You know, as he puts it, he would rather be safe than sorry, which I agree with him. So it sounds like we might not see the majority of starters playing this weekend again. Yeah, I think it's just hard to say exactly what he's thinking again. Yeah. The first year with any head coach is hard because you don't right. have that precedent to fall back on. But he did speak at length about how he likes the style that Sean McVay uses, uh, that Matt LaFleur in Green Bay uses. And mm-hmm. if you look at that, that means guys aren't going to play and that starters are kept out of it. And so you saw last weekend some starters played as much as you know a quarter the Broncos starters didn't really play at all. Yeah. You look at this week, there's going to be teams that play, you know, more teams are going to play their guys for a quarter. Some might play them for as much as a half. Some might treat the following week as a dress rehearsal and and really get guys ramped up during that. Mm -hmm. I think the more, the longer we go and the more I hear Nathaniel Hackett, I think there's a very real chance that we don't see Russell Wilson take a single preseason snap. I think there's a chance you don't see guys like Cortland Sutton, Justin Simmons, uh, Pat Sertan, yeah. Jerry Judy. I think there's a real chance, Javante Williams, there's a chance you don't see any of those guys take a single preseason snap just mm-hmm. because they know what they have in these guys. And especially when you've played so much football, you know, even guys like Javante and Pat who are younger, mm-hmm. the Broncos know what they have in them. Those are, they've right. come from big time college programs, um, especially Pat. Mm-hmm. And you know that they're going to be able to step in and play well. And even if there's a little bit of a, you know, working out the kinks the first week or two, I think these coaches have just decided that it's not worth it to risk, you know, what happened to Jonas Griffith. And so I keep thinking back to that. Exactly. And so I think, you know, that's going to be a Nathaniel Hackett mind, Nathaniel Hackett's mind as well mm-hmm. is, Hey, I only played four guys and one of them is out now four to six weeks. So right. you think about that. Is it worth it? Because even if they play, and sorry, I'm rambling here a little bit, but no, it's an, an interesting topic. It is, is. You know, even if they play, Cortland Sutton's going to play one quarter, right? And so that's 15 snaps or something like that. Is 15 snaps really going to make a difference in the grand scheme of things? Getting going to do ready? a ton for him. Exactly. And so is it worth it to have him get tackled and someone falls on him and, and he hurts something? You know, I, I think that's where this coaching staff is at. And so, yeah, I if they're going to play, I think it'll be this week, more so than Minnesota. But right. I think we're getting to the point where they just might not play at all, and it's going to take till week one before Broncos fans finally see Russ out there. Yeah. Well, we, we will keep waiting. I like the mindset that head coach Nathaniel Hackett has. Eric, appreciate your insight always. We will be right back here tomorrow. See you tomorrow, Sid. Now it's time to take a look at today's injury update. A couple of guys did not practice today. Lloyd Cushenberry, Jonas Griffith, KJ Hamler, Ronald Darby, Natani Muti, Tyree Cleveland, and Luke Wattenberg all did not participate. Plus, Marquise Spencer left practice early today. Coach Hackett said they are still evaluating him. And Coach Hackett said they are just resting Lloyd Cushenberry and making sure he's good to go. And for Luke Wattenberg, he suffered an ankle injury on Saturday in the preseason game. And Coach says he is a day-to-day. Well, that's all the time we have for tonight's episode. Broncos Country, thanks so much for tuning in for another episode of Broncos Now. Make sure to meet me right back here on the Broncos Podcast Network and YouTube for another edition tomorrow evening. I'll see you all then.